UCLA. Thank you. Uh, what's it been like for you so far? I mean, I love it. Uh, right here, we have the opportunity to study and playing at the same times, and it's something that we really don't have in Europe. So uh, I really love it. How did your recruitment? Can you take us through your recruitment a little bit and coach Evo and how you knew him and him bringing you here? Yeah, I mean, Coach Evo is he's been around Europe a lot, so you know a lot of kids from Europe, as Santi, the kid that he got drafted, and now he's playing in Memphis, and he was with him uh, in his old team. And once I got a call from him, I immediately decided to come here because I think UCLA is the best school in the country. So you already knew about it beforehand, UCLA? You knew about yeah, UCLA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, UCLA is such a big brand. I was telling my mom one funny story that in H uh, in H and M, all around the world, they're selling UCLA t-shirt and hoodies. So <laughs> it's such a big brand the worldwide. Funny. So did you have one before? Yeah. Yeah, my mom. <laughs> yeah, my mom. <laughs> My mom, like, people actually buy UCLA stuff in Italy, and it's everybody knew, like, no UCLA. So, so now that you play for UCLA, you know, uh, back home, how much of a big deal do you hear about people, you know, so proud of you now that you're wearing yeah, UCLA jersey? It's such a big deal, especially the first Italian player out here. And I mean, it's, it's a big thing. There was an Italian kid uh, a couple of years ago, he was playing Texas Tech, mm -hmm. David Moretti, okay. and it was a big deal too since they, they went far in the March Madness. And I mean, people love it. Like the Federation, they say that I did a good choice, like academically and professionally, like for bas basketball wise. What's, what's been the biggest adjustment for you um, in, in regards to the academics and the, the, the athletics at the same time? What's been the biggest adjustment? I mean, uh, I feel like uh, it's, it's different in the sense like the way they teach us how to play there and the way they teach them how to play here is is different and that's why like the reason why I came here I want to be like them in Europe we have like around like maybe 500 Americans which take very good amount of money and like play high level and all the other ones they are in the league mm -hmm. so that tell us that this way is the best way how to do it so that's why I decided to come here. Do you know uh, Daniel Hackett at all? Or do yeah. Know who he is? Yeah, I know Daniel. He went to USC, but he's still like a very big Italian player. And he, he texted me actually when I chose UCLA. He told me that it was a very good choice. Try something new and something that not all the Italian kids have a chance to do it. Did he give you any advice? Uh, just tell me to to like go to school, be, go be, a, go be a good student play hard, practice hard, and everything will be fine. How have you thought about your role and how you're fitting in uh, basketball-wise? I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I was the last arrived, and this team is a very good team. The past couple of years, they, they did very good, and I truly believe that each of us has to have, has to have a, a, a role in the team, and I know what's my role, so whenever the coach calling me, to go inside the game or to do something, I'm always ready to do it. And with time, maybe my role will change, but right now I know, I know what's my role. What is that? Uh, be ready whenever they call me to be ready, when maybe somebody had tra uh, false trouble, or when whenever they need me to go in the game, I, I'm always ready. And when you were playing overseas, how much older were some of the players you were playing against? Uh, I remember actually, uh, my second year in Roseto Sharks, uh, I was 17, and there was this guy, his name is Simone Pieric. He was his last year as a professional player. He was 37 years old. Hmm. How does that uh, maybe help you prepare and come over to play in the U.S.? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like older guys in Europe definitely help you a lot, like some, most of them. And it's, it's a plus because they've been around a lot, so they, they always talk to you, like, practice, but also out of the court, you know, with life stuff, because they are so much older than you that they've seen so much that they can easily help you. I think you've gone through a couple months of practices and obviously nine games. Um, what are the biggest things that you see in your game that you need to continue to work on? I mean, definitely uh, my defense. I need to work a lot on my defense since I feel like I have a good size and good. I'm quick enough to be a 
very good defender and I truly believe that that's what is going to let me play a lot during my whole career. Of course, you have to know how to play offense, but each of each of us ha has to have a role, you know. So I think playing defense, get rebounds, be aggressive, run the court, make open shots, that's that's what I have to do. It seems like you've embraced that too. I mean, you were doing some one-man press the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, throughout all my whole career, I, I always try to be aggressive and do my best. So I'm just trying to put in my myself into this new team. How long have you been fluent in English? I mean, <laughs> uh, in Europe, since we have a lot of Americans, uh, we, we kind of have to, to learn English pretty fast because practices, they are in English. Of course, our English is not as fluent as, as here because it's not our first language, but then I went to play out of Italy, so I had to, to learn it. How many languages do you speak? I speak uh, Italian, English, and a little bit of Spanish. Are you teaching any of the guys on the team Italian? Uh, they they, ask, they me some, ask you yeah, stuff? They ask me some sentences sometimes. Who, who's, who seems to be the most curious about the Italian language on the team? Is there one person in particular who wants to, like, how do you say this, how do you say that? Uh, not really, not okay. really. It's, okay. it's more like a, a random thing. Maybe okay. I'm okay. saying something, okay. and then we go back and forth. And I say, I told him in Italy, he would have said this in sure. English. It's different ways to say things, okay. you know. When you get mad at the refs, do you speak in Italian? <laughs> <Yeah>. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. How about the assistant coaches? Do any of them speak Italian? Savino, I think that's an Italian name. Yeah, yeah. Coach Savino, I have Italian roots. And yeah, the, the assistant coaches, they, they, are, they are amazing. They are amazing. They are always helping me in whatever I need. Does Coach Evo speak Italian? No. Okay. What have you thought about Tiger's new role and how he's kind of transitioning into that? Uh, I mean, it's huge for us. I mean, last year he didn't have to go score the ball like we need him to this year. So I think it's just been a little adjustment period. But I think by the end of the year, we'll have it figured out and he'll be rolling and back to what he's used to doing. How can you help him in this new role? Is there anything you can do? Um, I feel like we all give him support, confident, like our support, and tell him to remain confident. Because, I mean, I feel like all shooters go through slums and stuff like that. So, regardless, we're just going to keep trying to put him in the best position to go score the ball so we can win some games. How big is the defensive energy for a guy like Abramo and then Dylan off the bench this year, Ben? Oh, uh, it's huge. Um, I remember what it's like because that used to be me a year ago, if you know what I mean. So, it, it's just like a spark plug of energy. Like, everybody, we go, we didn't play eight, nine minutes. They all fresh legs. They can go up in there. Like you said, Abramo go pick somebody up and cause him to bounce it off his foot and go out of bounds. Or Dylan, who's a great defender, can go in there and cause havoc. That's and it gets us going again. When when coach wants to when, when coach wants you guys to press, how much do you enjoy? Like it's like a like pressing a button for you. Like yeah, it's kind no. of go crazy a little bit. Yeah, it, it, I that and then the part I was mad because at Stanford I wasn't feeling too well. But that's we've only done that like one time and just seeing how like shocked and caught off guard because I think teams now have have they've seen it so now they know we may press them or we may not but Stanford they had no idea was it like blood I mean. in the water a yeah little bit? and you could sense that they were lost and they didn't know what to do and their coaches didn't know if it was a man or his own so it was it was fun okay so what, what what's maybe it, what's an example of maybe if you know teams are going to know it's coming now, what are maybe some wrinkles you can do to disguise it or maybe it make it just as effective? Yeah, like I said, people don't know if we're in man or zone. Like, okay. it depends on what they do, whether we stay in man or go to zone. Um, but I feel like the biggest thing is just our on-ball pressure. If we pressure them, we get people turning, we're going to come or not. Like, I feel like there's so many ways Cronin has it disguised without trying to reveal it. So, cause I'm pretty sure people would, other teams would be watching this stuff. So, yeah. Right. What happened to your uh, shirt there? Oh, all my jerseys are ripped from practice. So, like, this one's more ripped than the other one. I have another one that's ripped, but at least this part's connected. So, it, like, looks better. But it didn't make the laundry. <laughs> so, I have to wear this one today. But, yeah, I don't have no normal jerseys. All my jerseys are ripped. How do they get ripped? Uh, various ways. Um, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of different ways. I think this one I ripped myself because I was upset. But other times... <laughs> I just be like, I'll reach or do something, and then out of reaction, somebody will grab or pull, 
or I'll go drive to the or be fighting for a rebound and we'd be boxing out and somebody will pull and they'll rip. Yeah. Is that like a little bit of a badge of honor? Um, yeah. Like, do you have like, it, you know, it's like yeah. being on the football field, having the dirtiest jerseys, yeah, yeah. you got the most messed or up like jerseys. the most cracks on your helmet. Yeah. yeah. Jaime has a few ripped jerseys too, but okay. he has some new ones. I didn't get any new ones. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. use the old Under Armour ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we're allowed to do that either. <laughs> <laughs> Are those uh, Pangos socks? Oh, yeah. I wear anything. Like, okay. I just... um. Since I don't live at home no more, I don't really do my laundry as much because, like, I'm used to being able to walk downstairs and just throw it in the washer and dryer and then, like, go play video games and play around and then three hours later moving it from the washer to the dryer and then leaving it overnight. But because I live at an apartment complex, if you move it, if you forget it, people will just take it out yeah, yeah. and throw it wherever they throw it. So I go wash it. Yeah, so I, I go home every while. But because I do, I wear random stuff to practice. I'll send, yeah. that to, I'll send that to Dean. I'll see yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Dean. I know you did an interview. I think it might have been yesterday, but uh, some of the same questions. Um, how, how is this transition going for you with the new kind of role and, and, and moving into that? Um, what do you mean? Uh, you know, the Steph Curry mode. Uh, <laughs> um, I'd say it's just staying confident. Um, the shots haven't been falling uh, at the highest level right now, but... Every shot I take feels good. I'm still in the gym working. And so uh, the transition is just, you know, I'm taking all those shots. It's just, you know, seeing them go in. Has the shot selection been when you, good when you went back and looked at the film? Um, yeah, obviously there's some shots um, throughout the course of a game that, you know, you think you could have got a better one or, you know, might have rushed it a little. But, you know, I, a lot of the shots I take, I hit. So just got to see them go in. I think you said in the other interview that you had a similar role back in Iowa when you were growing up. Does that help you at all, just that mindset maybe even of kind of doing that? Um, I'd say it's so much different now because obviously being like a college athlete, that's when I was, you know, growing up, middle school, early high school. So I, I, ha I have it in me. It's just kind of, you know, just hooping. How do you kind of weigh the balance between being a scorer and facilitator? I mean, it's got to be a, a tough line to walk in every possession almost. Yeah, you know, I just got to keep watching film and uh, just try to make the best play for my team every time, whether that's me scoring or, you know, assisting or, you know, just even getting off the ball and getting out of the way and letting someone else work. Well, speaking of Bromo, just a while ago, um, talked about how, you know, he embraces pretty much whatever he's thrown at him. Uh, how important is it to have a guy like that who maybe the minutes aren't going to be as high, but when he does get in, he's willing to do whatever it takes? Uh, you know, it's great having someone like that. You know, he's a great um, guy. Uh, he works really hard every day. When he gets in the game, he snags a couple of rebounds every time. And, you know, I feel like each game he gets a little more comfortable. So it's really just for guys like that, keeping their confidence up and just letting them know, like, their time is coming. When you look at your stats, is there anything you prioritize over the other? Um, like scoring, assists? I'm going to be honest. I haven't really looked at my stats a lot this year. Um, I don't normally look at that stuff until maybe like the end of the year or uh, something like that, but I don't really prioritize any stat. If there was one stat that I prioritize, it's winning. And um, if there's another one, I guess not turning the ball over. But other than that, um, nothing else really matters as long as we win. So the coaches point out stuff in the film, and that's kind of like how you gauge where you are as far as what you need to win. Yeah, I mean, of course, on my own time, I, I watch film and, you know, study the game, but. As far as like statistics wise, um, I just try to play basketball and just go out and do what I can for my team to help us win.